Recently, I got a chance to interview at Amazon where I cleared all the rounds but got rejected from system design round. I got a clear feedback from the recruiter that your system design knowledge is not up to the mark. And since then, I started working a lot on system design and now I have gained enough knowledge of that subject. If you want to level up from your junior engineer to senior developer or if you want to land a big job in high tech companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft and Meta, system design plays a crucial role. In this video, I am going to share 7 magical steps that you need to follow to crack any system design interview. I am going to tell each steps with real life example. So stay till the end of this video to get best out of it. Now, without any further delay, let's proceed. System design interviews isn't just about luck. It's about 7 magical steps that 99% of the candidate misses during the interview. I will be explaining each step with real life example so that you can understand it with more deeper way. Now let's understand each step one by one. Understanding goal and gathering all the requirement. Most of the students start designing the system as soon as they hear the questions from the interviewer. And what if I tell you, this is how 90% of the candidates fail the system design interviews. Why? Because they miss the most important part of your interview that is understanding the exact scope of your problem and clarifying the requirements. System design problems are by nature unclear and abstract. So understanding and asking the exact scope of the problem and clarifying the requirements from the interviewer early at the stage of interview becomes important. Now these requirements are further classified into two types that is functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Now let's understand what do you mean by functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Functional requirements. These are the requirements which end user specifically demands as a basic functionalities of your applications. Whatever the functionalities you discuss inside the functional requirements are the necessary be the part of your applications. Let's suppose you are designing the chat system like WhatsApp, then what will be the functional requirements? Functional requirements should be user should able to send the message, user should able to send the media files and user should able to form the group with this. So these are the functionalities that should necessarily be the part of your application. Non-functional requirements. Non-functional requirement basically contains about reliability, scalability and maintainability of your application. It's all about how you are able to scale your application in future, how you are going to maintain your application. For example, since you are building a chat system, your non-functional requirements can be there should be a zero latency, there should be zero downtime. Your application should able to check the metrics like logs and health checks. So this is all about the system design interviews that it's not about how fast you speak the technical terms. It's about how easily you understand the exact scope of your problem and clarifying the requirements before you start designing your application. Step 2. Understanding estimation and constraint. Imagine that you are asked to design a YouTube. Now is it for 10 users or is it for 10 million users? This one question can change the entire system architecture and that's why the step 2 comes in as understanding the estimation and constraint. And missing this step is just like doing a suicide. So before you dive deep into designing your system, understanding the exact estimated scale of your system becomes an important step. So before you proceed, get to know the expected scale of your system like how many users per day, how many requests per second, how many messages per day. These questions can totally shape your system from size of your database to know whether to use sharding, load balancer and rate limiter. For example, if a WhatsApp sends 1 billion messages per day, it's like 11,500 messages every single second. Now, scaling your system so that it can bear these 11,500 messages per second is really important thing. And that's why estimation and constraint becomes more important step before you start designing your system. High level component design. Now this is a step where you can get a chance to show that whether you are capable to build the real world applications or not. Now it's time to identify the required component to solve our problem and draft the first foundational system design architecture and outline the flow for data in between them. So this gives us organized view of our system architectures and set up the foundation for the future further detailing the design. While designing the components, don't just go and design it. Ask yourself which database you can use, which 
best caching technique you are using and most importantly also try to explain why you are using this because don't just draw explain why to each component this is what the interviewer loves to hear from the people detail design or low level design you nail the system design architecture your arrows and boxes looks neat and clean but hold on interviewer wants to have a little bit of zoom in now it's time to go into detail about one of the major components of your system design architecture as usual ask to the interviewer which components he want to have the further improvement tell him the approaches advantages and disadvantages of that particular component explain your design decisions with the help of examples like which caching technique you will use how you will reduce the latency how you will identify the sudden spikes into the system explain trade offs break down the logic and identify the edge cases before you go into detail explanation and this is what the interviewer loves to hear rather than simply going and using the components directly without informing why you are using it and what you are using it step 5 designing the data model you have designed the system architecture you map the component but here's the real test is your database capable to handle billions of requests without collapsing in system design interviews your data model becomes your backbone it can mainly help us to know how fast you can fetch your data how easily you can scale your application now it's time to define the database schema for your system architecture it mainly help Help us to understand how the data mainly flows, which is the core of the entire system. Now, in this step, we start listing the entities and maps the relationship in between them. Let's suppose you are designing the Instagram. Then, what kind of data we mainly needs? We can design the database schema for user table, likes table, post table, comment table. Now, we can ask the interviewer. whether to use sql or no sql do i need to have indexing step 5 is more than about just drawing all about converting your system architecture from the scalable to the query optimized database backbone step 6 designing the apis apis are basically the contract between the front end back end and the services get them wrong your system breaks get them right everything flows now we can start designing the apis for our system architecture of course we don't need to write any code but the simple interface that meets all the api requirements will be sufficient like parameters functions classes and entities for example let's suppose you are designing the twitter then your api design might look like this post slash tweet which mainly gives us to publish the tweet post slash follow it mainly help us to know to follow another user step 7 identifying and resolving the bottleneck your design looks perfect until billions requests hit your server and boom your server goes down there is a downtime and there are angry users and that's why step 7 is a final boss scalability maintainability and identifying the bottleneck in this step it's time to identify the bottleneck of your system architectures and explain the approaches you can use to mitigate them you can ask the question to yourself like are there enough database replicas is there any single point of failure do we need a database sharding now you have built the system design that can serve the real traffic scale to the millions and impress the top tier companies this seventh step isn't just a theory but this is a blueprint to crack any of the company's system design round and guess what out of this seventh step most of the candidate misses the two steps but the people who are watching this video they will not miss it now because you know the real game just you found this video real valuable please like this video subscribe the channel and share with your friend who is preparing for system design rounds and hey the next video is most frequently asked system design interview question so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe